Christianity in America is changing. The Protestant denominations known as the mainline have been declining for over half a century now, and in the meantime, non-denominational churches have appeared on the scene and quickly ascended. Catholics and evangelicals are more slowly becoming a smaller percentage in America as the number of people who don't claim any religion at all rises. But in the religious scene, it's easy to overlook one group of churches, a group that has not been as well known in the West as the Episcopalians, Baptists, and Pentecostals, despite being older than all of them. I'm speaking of the Eastern Orthodox churches. Don't confuse these churches with the Oriental Orthodox, like Coptic or Armenian churches, which I'll be discussing in another video. Who we're talking about includes the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of America, Orthodox Church in America, and Antiochian Orthodox Christian Archdiocese of North America. The reason why the Orthodox are often overlooked in the discussion of American Christianity is that their numbers have historically been very low. When there's 25 religious groups larger than Orthodoxy in America, it makes sense why it's going to take some effort to get recognition. And that's around where Orthodoxy in America lands. According to the 2020 U.S. Religion Census, all Eastern Orthodox adherents combined fall behind 25 other religious groups in the rankings. And when you divide them out, the largest Eastern Orthodox Church in America, the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese, is only number 34. There's over six times more Muslims in America than Eastern Orthodox, and some denominations that most Americans aren't familiar with, like the Christian and Missionary Alliance, are larger than the largest Orthodox bodies. But that's no surprise to most Orthodox people in America. People aren't becoming Orthodox because they want to be part of the biggest church, but people are becoming Orthodox. Anyone paying attention to the American Christian scene online can't help but notice that there has been a vocal and enthusiastic group of people converting to the faith. Nearly every month, a new video appears on YouTube that gets tens of thousands of views discussing another person's journey to Orthodox Christianity. A 2008 study found that 29% of Greek Orthodox were converts, and 51% of the Orthodox Church in America were. In the OCA, 56% of the clergy were also converts. I'd like to take a moment to let you know about an app that can help you understand more about what's going on in the world, Blinkist. You can listen to or read the key ideas from books on this app or in your web browser. And this year I've actually listened to 110 Blinks so far, and they're great for turning downtime like driving into an educational experience. I've heard books on religion like The Reason for God by Tim Keller, biographies like Titan on the life of John Rockefeller, and history like The Mosquito Bowl, which tells of American football stars going to war. I also recently listened to Thunder struck which interweaves two true stories that of an inventor and a murderer in england and i won't spoil it but there were some real twists and turns in there i also love that with blinkist i can share my favorite blinks using blinkist spaces so anyone with or without a membership can listen to or read the ones that i share there and i can put any number of blinks into different spaces i also like that blinkist keeps releasing new books it's a great way to always learn something new you should try this out too. Sign up for Blinkist Premium to get access to over 6,500 books and sharing with Blinkist Spaces. You get 25% off Blinkist Annual Premium with my referral and a free seven day trial. Click the QR code here or follow this link. It's also down in the video description. If you wanna make more of your time than scrolling social media, you should go ahead and get Blinkist. It's great for anyone who wants to keep learning. Thanks Blinkist for sponsoring this video. Terry Mattingly investigated the case of conversions to orthodoxy in his article, What Do the Converts Want?, on the Antiochian Archdiocese's website. He says, I believe that most of these converts are coming out of that core 20% of their former churches. They are active, highly motivated people. They read, they think, they sing, and they serve. That hunger for more, that hunger for sound doctrine, is sending them to orthodoxy. These orthodox converts are seeking mystery. They want a non-fundamentalist approach to the faith, but they are not fleeing the faith of the ages. They are trying to get back to the trunk of the tree. All around them are churches that are either modern, postmodern, post-postmodern, or post-post-postmodern. The American converts are not looking for some kind of post-Vatican II carved down liturgical experience. They have that all around them. They are not trying to cut the service down another 15 to 20 minutes so that more young people will hang around as if that would work. Speaking as a journalist, I can tell you that the lively growing Roman parishes are not the ones that have cut the mass down to 45 minutes. You see, the people who want to worship want to worship. 
One of the trends in American journalism is to try to create newspapers for people who don't read. This seems to me to be somewhat contradictory. Similarly, there are many churches that are creating worship services for people who do not want to go to worship services. The Orthodox converts are not interested in those churches. Also, the converts want their children to be Orthodox. They are looking for churches that will offer their children a winsome living faith that they will want to follow. So, if the Orthodox Church is seeing a steady stream of converts, although small right now, they're on the right path, right? Well, let's look at the numbers first and then we can decide. Along with the 2020 U.S. Religion Census was the Census of Orthodox Christian Churches, and the coordinator, Alexei Krindich, provided a detailed report with charts showing how things look. First, let's familiarize ourselves with the size of the various churches. The Greek Orthodox Archdiocese is far and away the largest group, with over 375,000 adherents. Number two, the Orthodox Church in America has just short of 75,000. After the top four, the numbers quickly fall off. What's interesting is the count of parishes. Despite a massive disparity in adherence, the Orthodox Church in America actually pushes out the Greek Orthodox to take the number one spot here with 559 parishes. So unsurprisingly, in Krindich's chart showing the number of adherents in a typical median church, we see that the churches under the Greek Archdiocese have 350 and the OCA is down at only 95. Note that the census also counted a couple small true Orthodox churches which are not in communion with the mainstream of Eastern Orthodoxy. With that background, let's look at how the last decade fared for Eastern Orthodoxy. In fact, the overall numbers showed decline. From 2010 to 2020, the count of adherents dropped from 816,000 to 675,000, and regular attendees fell from 212,000 to 183,000. A bright spot is that the number of parishes did increase from 1,957 to 2014. So where is the decline? All of the largest church bodies experienced it. The Greek Orthodox Archdiocese dropped by over 100,000 adherents. In absolute numbers, that number of people is actually larger than the entire size of any one of the other Orthodox groups. The OCA lost 12%, the Antiochian Church was down 5%, Serbians down 13% and Rokor down 14%. There are some exceptions, however. The Macedonian diocese saw an 11% increase and the Bulgarians increased by 60%. So how is it that Orthodoxy has seen this decline while at the same time they celebrate conversions and have an outsized presence in many online discussions of American Christianity? Let's revisit the last sentence from my quote of Mattingly's article. Also, the converts want their children to be Orthodox. They are looking for churches that will offer their children a winsome living faith that they will want to follow. This observation, keeping the children orthodox, seems like the place we need to look to find the decline. If people are converting in and they are at least having kids at their replacement rate, then people must be leaving if there's a decline. On June 10, Ryan Burge, who studies denominational statistics and makes hundreds of graphs and charts to display the data, stated an observation on Twitter. If I've learned anything in looking at religious statistics, it's this. When it comes to growth, retention is easy and conversion is hard. The best indicator of the future size of a religion is not the number of missionaries it sends, but how many children are in the pews. So we ask, what is the retention rate of orthodoxy? and the Pew Research Center has those statistics. In the 2014 Religious Landscape Study, they determined what percentage of people raised in different faiths still identified with it. Of those polled, 80% of those Americans raised Hindu were still Hindu. 77% of the Muslims stayed Muslim. 75% of those raised in Judaism were retained. Historically Black Protestant, 70%. Evangelical Protestant, 65%. Mormon, 64%. Catholic, 59%. Where does orthodoxy fall in here? It's at 53%. That's tied with unaffiliated people who stay unaffiliated and ahead of three groups in the poll. Mainline Protestants who are cratering even faster, Buddhists and Jehovah's Witnesses who lose about two thirds of those raised in the faith. Terry Mattingly is aware of this too. In his article, he says, in many Orthodox churches across America, the average age of the parishioners is about the same as the average age of the people in mainline Protestant churches. 
Many Orthodox churches are having trouble retaining their young people, so they are seeking ways to stop the bleeding. But there's the rub. If you're not creating new faith, you will not retain the children of those who had the faith in the first place. As the old saying goes, God has no grandchildren. You have to give the faith away. In my experience of Orthodoxy, I have found nothing more poignant or more painful than talking to ethnic parents and grandparents whose children have left the faith. They can't understand. They thought America was going to be a wonderful place. They thought America was going to be a place that would make them feel at home. They thought they were offering their children a better life. Now, in some sense, America has taken away their children. Here is that hard truth again. If their children are to practice Orthodoxy, they will have to believe it. They will have to want to practice it. The faith will have to be their own. Let me stress that there is no such thing as a convert church, but there are convert-friendly Orthodox churches. Even a church that is largely made up of converts must, in the end, be a church that welcomes all Orthodox people. Meanwhile, there are ethnic parishes that are full of people who, as Father Joseph Honeycutt on the Orthodoxy weblog likes to call them, are reverts. There are cradle Orthodox priests who are as on fire as any convert will be in their lifetimes. You see, this is not about ethnicity. We are not talking about the convert era, but a convert-friendly era. The worship in these churches will be in English, and the people, all the people, will be singing. You will see lots of children, and chrismation rites and adult baptisms will not be strange, mysterious events. The list of their children who are headed off to church camp will be long. Some of these churches will have tight budgets, but they will be tight because they are struggling to cope with growth, not decline. You will find people being called to the priesthood, the diaconate, and other forms of service. Back in 2012, Peter Cahays, founding president of St. Anna's Greek Orthodox Church of Flemington, New Jersey, recognized the issue of retention among American Greek Orthodox, saying, Since 1922, with continuing immigration and with families spreading across America, over 300 churches were added. Yet, as the Greek American population has grown into the millions, the number of religiously observant communicants has dropped significantly. Although the Greek American population has grown extensively through immigrations and post-war baby boomer periods, there are fewer active Greek Orthodox today than in 1922, a period during which the overall American population has tripled. In 2022, Orthodox theologian, scholar, and professor John Paniotu wrote the article, What Happened? How Did We Get Here? Where Are We Going? A Master Class in Decline in Eastern Orthodox Church Membership. In part, he said, I remember one senior clergyman opining to me that the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese was seeing a consistent annual plummet in the number of weddings it was doing. Hence, that was one of the reasons that the statistics were not being made available. Another reason for this non-publication was the decline in Orthodox Church's number of baptisms slash chrismations to funerals ratio. One does not need to be a statistician to realize by mere observation that in most of our parishes the numbers of funerals outweigh the numbers of baptisms slash chrismations per year. Having said this, that is not to say that there are exceptions to this rule in the parishes where membership has grown, especially from converts to Protestantism and Roman Catholicism, yet these numbers do not offset the state of decline overall. In a Wall Street Journal article, Religion is on the Decline as More Adults Check None, the matter of declining church attendance and membership in America is highlighted as being one of the significant trends in American life. The Orthodox are not immune to this type of decline phenomenon and thus are no different as individuals with the prevailing cultural trends. The liturgy should not be seen as an exotic ritual that one drops in on as a Sunday morning routine, but rather as a corporate worship experience where we connect with others in a transformative, existential, and supernatural way. As the patristic writings warn, when that that is not promoted and made available, then regardless of pomp and ceremony, emptiness and darkness prevails. Nothing exists in a vacuum. Paniotu provided several suggestions for reversing the decline. Number one, the church through its ordained and lay leadership need to be seen as having a relevance to its own flock and the greater community outside its walls. Number two, avoiding of extremism. On one end, church presented as a totally secular institution, and on the other end, church as cauldron of religious extremism and fundamentalism of a variety of ideologies. Number three, the basic mission of the local church is to preach the gospel and to help those in their times of need. Number four, the local church needs to understand and maintain its priorities. The local church first and foremost is to be where a body of believers gathers as the Eucharistic assembly to worship God. The church is not there to first and foremost maintain some cultural 
cultural customs. Number five, a change of mindset is necessary on how the church leadership and how members view the church itself and their roles in it. If we are truly worshiping and communing with the Holy Trinity, preaching and teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, and being of service and help to those in their times of need and distress, this is not a segmented part of our lives. This is who we are called to be 24-7. The bottom line is this. A strategic planning committee or feasibility plan is not going to solve the crises of rapid decline in the Orthodox Church. The activity of the Holy Spirit will transform Orthodox if only they want it. If people and their churches become people of prayer, then the churches will grow. If they don't, then it will be business as usual. Perhaps Panayotou's observations of things Orthodox churches could do which will lead them to grow or not do, causing them to shrink, gives some insight into what's happening in Orthodoxy today. In the comment section of Orthodox YouTube, often you may hear about thriving, growing Orthodox churches, convert-heavy English-speaking churches. But you don't hear as much from the ethnically homogeneous churches which are more difficult for an English-speaking American to convert to. Perhaps it is that there is a growing segment of the church and a declining one. And for the Orthodox, that can be a beacon of hope. After all, at its worst, the one side of the church can only decline so far before it disappears. But in the churches that are experiencing growth, the potential is limitless. Don't forget to sign up with Blinkist. If you have a commute, a time you run each day, or you like to wind down at the end of the night, these are all great times to sneak in a 15-minute blink. Click the link below to get started.